Prospective students, I would like to welcome you at the University of St. Gallen. My name is Ulrich Schmidt. I'm one of the vice presidents of this university and at the same time a professor of East European Studies. 
I am a member of the School of Humanities and Social Sciences. This is already one of the distinctive features of our university. If you come here to study management, economics, law, international affairs, or computer science, you will also encounter classes from the so-called contextual studies. You may choose from a broad variety of classes uh, that explain various regions of the world and invite you to reflect on the ethical implications of your actions. And of course, uh, sustainability is an important topic that cuts across many programs of our university. We also react quickly to, change, to the changing agenda of world politics. For instance, uh, I try to explain to my students the roots of Russia's war of aggression against Ukraine and its implications for European politics and world trade, including energy markets. I'm grateful that you are considering the University of St. Gallen as the place where you plan uh, to get your bachelor's degree. St. Gallen is a medieval town situated in the northeast of Switzerland. When you visit the city, you will find the famous monastery, which is part of the UNESCO World Heritage. At the same time, you will find here affordable housing, a wonderful lake, and excellent hiking opportunities in the mountains. Germany and Austria are 30 minutes by train. We are a small university with about 9,000 students. We consider this to be an advantage. The professors know each other personally, and uh, the students stand a good chance uh, to meet uh, their colleagues in other classes on campus or in one of the many student clubs. We offer our programs in uh, German and English. You will find fellow students from Switzerland, Europe, and all over the globe. We're looking forward to welcoming you at the University of St. Colin. Dear prospecting future students, um, I'd like to welcome you to this presentation. I'm uh, Pascal Lipton, I'm the Deputy Dean of Studies, and uh, I'm a long-term fellow of this university. I did here my master's degree and also my PhD degree, and I've been working in the management of the university for a couple of years. I will give you an overview of our bachelor studies, and uh, I won't be doing this alone. Um, there will be two students joining me, that will be Sabrina and uh, Kalunua, who will join me and who will give you a, a respective student perspective on our university. So two administrative questions. One is if you have any questions on admissions, um, then it's uh, better or it's, uh, it's better for you if you write an email, um, write an email to admissions at university.ch. And uh, the reason is uh, usually admissions questions are too complex and therefore it's easier if it's done on a one-to-one -one basis if questions arise. And another point is if you have any uh, other questions on our studies, uh, we do offer a chat function. So uh, please use this chat function. Uh, it's for uh, content-wise questions, but also if you have techni technical problems. So just use this chat function. So in order to get to our agenda. So what will I be talking about? I will be giving you an overview of our bachelor's program. And I will also tell you about the structure of our university or our structure of our studies at our universities. And then the two students will uh, take over and uh, talk to you about student life, about exchange semester, exchange possibilities, about the campus life. And then of course, you will have the chance to um, answer your questions. And of course, there will be a second part uh, of it where you will be able to learn about our major programs. And uh, there are two sessions offered to you where you can get information on one or two majors if you are interested in one of those. 
Well, what are we offering on our bachelor's level? We do have uh, six majors which are offering. Um, one is our business uh, master's bachelor's program in business administration. In German, it's a team translator. That's why the German abbreviation EVL. And uh, well, what what is it offered here? It's a very practical studies um, where you get the you know the basics of uh, business administration. That will be courses in management, in accounting, strategic management, and so on. And you will equip you with a range of, of uh, um, offerings or um, knowledge, with a range of knowledge that you can get into different jobs at the management or international level. Then we have a second uh, bachelor's degree program that's a bachelor's in economics. Um, there you will get to know micro or macroeconomics or topics like data analysis. And uh, it's a very flexible course structure and uh, it will enable you to get into the economics uh, community. Then next offerings will be international affairs. Then we have uh, topics like uh, politics, international law or international economics. And we will get to you, um, you will some, you will get some general idea on, on how um, to communicate on, on an international level. Then the, the fourth offering will be computer science. And uh, what's special about it, it's a pure computer science program. And uh, well, it has the basics with, with uh, mathematics, analysis, uh, programming, or program structures. And it's a brand new curriculum. It will be the, the second cohort, um, the, the coming upcoming semester of the upcoming year. So it's it's really brand new, and the University of Bern wants to position itself in the brand of computer science. Then, when we go on on the next level, um, there will be the bachelor's in law. It's a pure law degree program where you get the basics of our uh, international or national law and. The last program will be law and economics. There, it's a combination between no, law separate. courses and yeah. also economics right. courses. Yeah. Uh, in this program, you will also find topics like controlling or management topics. So that's an overview on our different majors program. And now we got we'll get to the structure of our university and how how we structure it. Well, it's first of all we have a principal. And one of the, uh, the main principles is that our students should be conscious of their role and to learn to assume long-term responsibility for society. That's actually not, nothing more to say. Um, it's our principle that we do not want only to give you the basics of a certain uh, discipline, but to work with that in the long term so that you take on a responsible role in society. So that's the structure and of course the first day at the university starts with a special week and this week is called start week and we'll give you a glimpse on the start week how it would be presented to if you started at this university St. Gallen hier befindet sich das Revier der HSG Spezies nach einer langen Sommerpause kehrt wieder Leben ein die Reise zu diesem Ort gilt als eine der größten Wanderbewegungen der Region. Im letzten Moment findet eine Nachzüglerin das Revier auf. Bleibt zu hoffen, dass auch sie Anschluss an das Rudel findet. Wir bleiben dran. Neben mir befindet sich der neue Bau der HSG Spezies. Er wurde über vier Jahre errichtet und nun bezogen. Mein Korrespondent versucht mal näher an die Jungtiere ranzukommen. Ich übernehme jetzt hier von der Anna und wir wollen genauer herausfinden und genauer erforschen, wie sich diese HSG-Spezies denn überhaupt verhält. Direkt nach der Ankunft steht das gegenseitige Beschnuppern und der angeregte Austausch im Vordergrund. Unserem Kollegen gelang es, mit einem besonders zutraulichen Jungtier zu sprechen. Bist du schon so Teil des hsg rudes Also konntest du dich bereits gut einfinden? Äh, ja, also ich glaube, unsere Tutoren helfen uns sehr gut dabei. Woran erkennt man denn ein Mitglied der HSG-Spezies? Also ich hätte jetzt so gesagt, der hätte so weiße Eisungs an. 
dann so ein Stoffanzugshose und so ein Polo. Also wenn man da jetzt so über das Weiben kann, hätte ich gesagt, ich sieht eigentlich schon recht äh, so aus, als würde er da studieren. Bei Anbruch der Dunkelheit folgen wir zwei Jungtieren in die Stadt. Dort geht das Beschnuppern weiter. Drücken wir die Daumen, dass sie die Nacht gut überstehen. Bist du denn heute wieder fit und kannst du für die Polarisierungsfallstudie abliefern? Ja, natürlich. Ja, dann zeig mal her. Also. Das alljährliche Beschnuppern neigt sich dem Ende zu. Wir verlassen nun das Hauptquartier und kehren nächstes Jahr zurück, um das einzigartige Naturschauspiel zu beobachten. Against this video clip has given you a very good overview on our start week. And uh, this is, as it is a said, is a, it is a week uh, where you are studying with our student, fellow students, you get to know them. And after this week, we're actually in the assessment year. And the assessment year has three purposes. One is to give you the basic knowledge on uh, an integrated approach on, on the basic subjects. Like, for example, in business administration, economic, economics, and law. So that's the first um, objective. The second objective is to give you an orientation, meaning if the University of St. Gallen is right for you, um, you will have the chance to, when you're entering those, those topics, to see, well, is it what really interested me? And the third component, the third objective, of course, is also a, a selection process. Um, but actually, it's not the selection process that's done through the university, but usually it's a self-selection process if students just think, well, yeah, the ISG is not the right institute for me. So therefore, it's actually the least component, the least objective of the three. When we are looking at the, the, uh, the next slide, we will um, see um, and an overview on what kind of majors you're able to study. So when you're doing the um, assessment year in uh, economics and business administration, you will have four majors available to you. And the assessment year, and um, you see on the left side, is offered in German and in English. And you have four majors available to you. And interesting is our major in law and economics, and um, you're studying that with and economics assessment year. So that's something special. So if you want to be the major in law and economics, you're actually doing the economics assessment year and then switch to a law in economics major. When you're doing the, the assessment year in legal, with uh, legal courses, then you have the major in law. And uh, of course, when you're doing the computer science or program, then you have one major available to you, the major in computer science. So as you can see, the assessment years also offered in German and English, that's for business administration, economics and international affairs, it's offered in English. When you're doing the pure law degree or computer science degree, then it's offered in German only. Um, what's our um, what's a prerequisite? If you want to study in English, actually your secondary school leaving certificate is enough in order to study um, at our university in English. And if you are insecure, if, if your English is, is uh, up to date, or even your German is up to date, you can ask um, our Sprachenzentrum, our language department, through this email address and ask them um, for a test, a free language test. So then you can decide whether you really want to do the assessment year in English or if you want to do it in German. So, um, I always like to uh, present this slide just to give an overview on how the, the assessment week would be, uh, would be evolved. And there you see the Monday is off. We usually um, keep that uh, as a promise that students have one day off in the whole year. So it will be either in the autumn semester or in the spring semester get one day off. When you look at the, um, yeah, when you look at, at the courses, 
then you you can see um, that they are some course in graphic blue, um, and there are also some three time, some three time spots. And the idea is, of course, not that you have free time, but that you study uh, during this time. And you can see there's sometimes you have the morning off, and then courses just start in the afternoon, or vice versa, where you have courses in the morning, and then it switches to when you have uh, free time in the afternoon. So when you look at the curriculum at uh, the assessment year, then you see on one side we have so-called core studies. Those are the, the disciplines, the basic principles, like for example, business administration, economics, law, um, and some other courses, or we have the so-called contextual studies. With the contextual studies, we'll give you a multidisciplinary view um, on the core studies and also give you insight in other topics. And uh, we have three pillars that uh, is um, one pillar is uh, the skills bracket. The other pillar is uh, critical um, um, critical thinking. And the, the third part is a, a language. So when you're doing the assessment in business, economics, uh, and the international affairs and law, you have to do one foreign language. So that's the basics of our assessment year in business administration, economics, international affairs, and law. And uh, here you see the curriculum uh, as it is presented for the computer science courses. And you see a lot of the fundamental courses like uh, introduction to programming, programming methods. Um, then we have some other courses like analysis, linear algebra, and uh, courses like that. We do have so called core electives, but in computer science, um, there you have more correlations towards business administration economics and less towards the so-called contextual studies. Contextual studies will be a part, uh, but in the upcoming third to sixth semester. So that's the computer, uh, that's the curriculum and um, the computer science major. And when you look at the examination, there is how it is uh, presented um, to you when you're looking at the business administration, economics, international affairs, and law uh, curriculum, we actually start with uh, two papers that you have to write in the autumn semester. Uh, one is in academic writing, the other is in uh, um, cultural, um, so called CUSO, as we call it, uh, cultural and sociology uh, bracket. And after that, uh, we have the Christmas break, and after the Christmas, uh, Christmas break, we have four exams that we have to take. One is in business administration, one is in economics, the third is in law, and the fourth is depends on either if you're doing the um, um, assessment in law or if, if you're doing it in, uh, in economics. Uh, if it's in economics, then it's a mathematics exam that you have to take. If it's in law, then you have to take another law exam. So those will be four exams that you have. Right during by the middle to the end of January. And if just before Christmas time, you have to um, take a topic on uh, an academic writing paper. And you have to turn in this writing paper in April. And when you start your, your spring semester, there is a group work called um, the International Project that you have to do, or so called integrated project. And um, you have to turn in this paper by uh, the end of April. And by the end of uh, the spring semester, there are also a bunch of um, exams uh, that you have to take, like a second uh, exam in business administration, a second exam in economics, a second exam in law, and also a second exam in mathematics or in law. And there we have some oral exams as well in the foreign language. Um, there is, is an oral, and then there's also an a, a oral exam in the contextual studies. And in all of those uh, in, in this year, um, we are also offering three possibilities to write uh, an accountancy exam. So we also have to pass an accountancy, accountancy exam if you want to continue with your studies. That looks uh, on the first route like an awful lot of exams. But it's all very structured, and you don't have to do it all at once. So it's really split up over a whole year. So that makes it quite manageable for students. 
Um, in order to pass the assessment year, um, of course, um, it's a minimum grade of 4.0 is, is uh, necessary. Um, you have to do all the courses, those 60 credits. Um, then you also have to pass the exam accountancy exam. And there's also one foreign language, um, but only if you are in economics and in the legal or law assessment year. There you also have to complete the foreign language, but that's part of those 60 credits that you have to do. And if you fail uh, the assessment year as a whole, um, you have to do or you have the option to do it, but then you have to do uh, all exams again, with the exception of the accountancy exams. So that can be transferred, but the other exams need to be redone again. When you are, have successfully passed your assessment year, then you have a couple of majors available to you. And those majors are offered either in German or in English like business administration, economics, international affairs. And those majors are offered either in German or in English. And uh, the law, the law and economics and computer science majors are only offered in German. When you're doing an, in, a major in, in, uh, in German or in English, like business administration, there you also have to do a couple of credits in other language. And that's independent if you're doing it in German or if you're doing it in English. So uh, the reason for that is um, we want to have our students equipped um, so they are so that they are actually able to also uh, think and take exams in the other language. When you're done with your bachelor's degree, you have uh, the option of either going to a master's program or to go on to a first career of start, either whether it be an internship or whether it be an, an employment without any limitations. We are offering two degrees, and that's the Bachelor of Arts um, and the Bachelor of Science. The Bachelor of Science is only awarded for students who have done the computer science majors. So yeah, so those are the options when you have done your bachelor's degree. And let's just have a look at the master's programs that we're offering. At the master's level, there's a full bunch of master's program, uh, whether it be business administration, economics, international affairs, law, or computer science as well. Um, those programs are offered either in German or in English, like for example, marketing management or accounting and corporate finance, or they're offered just in English like, for example, uh, strategic management uh, or uh, banking uh, and finance. Um, then we also offer so-called so hybrid uh, programs. Those are programs which require students to take a certain amount of credits in German and in English. So a third of all the courses in, for example, business innovation need to be taken in German and a third needs to be taken in English. Um, when you're looking at the economics uh, master's program, you do have two economics master's program available to you. That's economics and quantitative economics and finance. When you're doing international affairs, you have the master's degree in international affairs and governance. Uh, in law, we are also offering an international law program. So you could, you know, with the German uh, major student in law, you could do as well an international law degree. And when you're looking at the computer science, uh, computer science program in uh, at the bachelor's level is in German, and the computer science program at the master's level is offered in English. So the curriculum, um, I won't go into details in, 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 with this chart, uh, but it's very comparable um, or comparable to what we're offering at the bachelor's level. Uh, you have core courses, you have contextual courses, and contextual courses are divided into area of concentration and skills. Um, that's uh, very similar to the bachelor's degree. And the same is with the computer science. Uh, with computer science, we also have the so-called contextual studies uh, pillar, uh, which will be offered. We also, we also offer so-called um, supplementary courses. Um, so we have the option to do um, a certificate or get a second uh, um, degree in, in so-called, in, in a certain sense, that's a certificate. 
And we offer these um, five certificates right now. First of all, there's the certificate in data science fundamentals that's offered in at the bachelor's level. Um, you should take that, that third, third semester and it's offered in English. Then we are also offering so-called subfamily courses in business education. So if you think about if becoming a teacher, you have uh, the chance to get a certificate uh, in order to be able to do that. And this uh, starts actually at the bachelor's level, but you can also start with it at the master's level or to do it uh, at the postgraduate level. If you're done with your master's degree, you could either take or still take up these studies. Then we have three other uh, certificate programs. Uh, one is the certificate program in management climate solutions. The other one is digital communication journalism. And the third is a uh, certificate in financial technology. Those are all offered at the master's level. And um, in order to get into one of those certificate, certificate program, we need to apply for it. So there's an application process if you want to do one of those certificate programs. So we're also getting asked, well, what does our studies cost? Um, we have a differentiation between uh, Swiss students or students who have done the secondary school leading certificate in Switzerland. They pay about 1,200 Swiss francs for that. And uh, if you are foreign students and have done your foreign your secondary school degree at the foreign institutions, you have to pay a bit more. It's a bit more than 3,000 uh, Swiss francs. And the reason for that is um, we get uh, a certain amount uh, of money from the government, um, but we get more amount or more, more money from the government for Swiss students and less for foreign students. And in the end, to get the same amount of money, um, the tuition fees difference between Swiss and German students. Then when you're breaking that down to annual living expenses in, in St. Gallen, uh, it's a bit, uh, um, it's a bit uh, it doesn't cost that much to, to live in St. Gallen, but it still about, amounts to about 25 to 30,000 Swiss francs. And we also offer students help if, he, if they get, you know, if they have some financial troubles and they receive the email address studyfunding.unisg.ch. <coughs> Now, if you have done your decision and if you want to study at the University of St. Gallen, um, our online uh, window, our, our online um, enrollment is open. Um, it's already open until the 30th of April. And for foreign students um, with uh, no secondary school living, uh, secondary school living certificate in Switzerland, they have to do a so-called admission test. There are two, two offerings in February and in June. And if you've passed that, um, you may start the start week on September 11th of the next year. So that were, were my uh, explanations to you about the overview on the bachelor's program and the structure of our studies. And now I will be handing over to the students who will tell you more, more about student life and exchange opportunities. Wish you the very best, and hopefully, I will be, be able to see you at our university. Thank you so much. Um, also, a very warm welcome from my side. My name is Sabrina Dolini. Um, I'm a business, not a business student, <laughs> I'm an international affairs student. Um, and currently my third semester at Hasgi. Now I will tell you about the student life and what it is like studying at Hasgi. First of all, I want to point out that our community here at Hasgi is very active. Um, we have a lot of getting involved organizations. There are a lot of student courses, which we have had earlier as well. Um, first of all, I would like to uh, mention the sports program, which is free. We have a very well-equipped gym um, where I like to work out with my friends a lot. Uh, we have a lot of free courses as well, for example, yoga, body pump, TRX. Um, we also have basketball, soccer, and tennis. So we really have the whole range, of almost every single um, sports program that you can imagine we have here. <laughs> 
Um, then we also have a lot of clubs. We have, for example, sports clubs. For example, if you want to play tennis, you can go to the tennis club. If you want to play hockey, you can go to the hockey club. Um, but we also have other student initiatives. So for example, what you can see on the slide is the START um, Summit, which is a student initiative which organizes a conference um, for startups. They book the whole OMA um, halls, which is quite a big um, fair, um, fair landscape here in Van Gallen, um, and they uh, organize this conference yearly. So it's a very great opportunity to really get involved, getting hands-on um, and hands-on experience as well. For example, me, for my part, I'm part of the Asia Club. I am the vice president. So we organized, for example, um, food events. We had a sushi and sake where we invited a sake expert. Um, we will have the Asia Days conference, which is a conference that will be held in March, um, where also a lot of different experts are invited and we'll be talking about what it is like to do business in Asia mainly. Um, we are awarded credits for our, uh, for our active engagement. <clears throat> so the university really encourages us to do something not only for our degrees and in the courses of the university, but also to really engage and get this hands-on opportunity. Working, for me, working in Asia Club is really about um, having like my own little startup team. Um, and it's really cool to work together with students to create something that has a, a bigger impact than only stud studying. Um, but yeah, studying is also pretty great here. <laughs> uh, next, we have the also the s Husky, which is the student community. Um, they represent students towards the management of the university, and you can get a bit more information in the next film. Hi, and welcome to the Student Union of the University of St. Gallen. I'm Leonie and this year's Head of Marketing and Events. Come on in and let me show you around. The SISG is an official part of the university. We represent the interests of all students by focusing on today's needs and future expectations. We also offer a wide range of services, as well as legendary parties and events. Let me introduce you to Gabi. She's our secretary and welcomes you at the SISG house. And this is Irina. Hi, and a warm welcome also from my side to every new student here at HSG. My name's Irina and I'm this year's president of the Student Union. Come on, let me introduce you to the rest of my board. Here we have Matthias. He's head of IT and campus culture. This is Anne. She's responsible for the representation of your interests towards the university. Here we have David. He's responsible for our finances. And last, but definitely not least, we have Dominic. He's my vice president and also responsible for HR, clubs and sustainability. In addition to the board and around 30 team members, we also have five initiatives who provide various of services for you. Welcome to the Co, a co-working space provided by SHSG's infrastructure initiative. Here, you may study with the materials from SHSG's Script Commission or plan your next cultural adventure with the initiative Resort International. Speaking of services, we also run the relaxation room, so if you want to come by for a quick power nap, we're happy to invite you here. Prisma, the student magazine on campus is another initiative of the SHSG. Provides you with all the latest gossip and the happenings on campus. You shouldn't miss it. Now, you may ask yourselves what exactly the SHSG does. Well, we represent all students' interests. That means we are actively engaged in university projects to bring in a student's perspective. But what does this effectively mean for you? Well, in case you have any concerns or inputs about university life, feel free to hit me up during my consultation hours here at Square or elsewhere on campus. Here at Atok, our on-campus bar, you can end your day over one or two beers with your friends. If you see us anywhere on campus, feel free to talk to us. You can even join our team and get well rewarded between four to six credits. To stay updated on everything, follow our Instagram and LinkedIn at Studentenschaft. Also, don't forget to download our app to benefit the most from our offers. 
Cheers. 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 And welcome at HSG. Exactly. So the SISG is a really great opportunity to be in connection with the university and bring your own initiatives to the next level. Another initiative, um, which is not run by students this time, but from actual experts, um, is the Korean Corporate Services. They have a, an office here at um, M campus that allows these experts, experts to counsel us students and give us the um, opportunity to prepare well for, for example, for a job interview, um, they do interview trainings, they do CV checks, um, from which I profited a lot personally. Um, and they also run workshops every now and again, for example, how to um up, up to how to make your LinkedIn appearance better. LinkedIn is a quite a big thing on campus as well. Um, we also have the Haskey Talents Conference, um, which is uh, basically also, it's also held in the Oma House, so you can see that Oma is a pretty big thing. Um, there are over 100 companies recruiting Haskell students, and this is the perfect opportunity to, for example, secure an internship for the summer break, or also if you finished your bachelor's studies, um, or also your master's later on, um, to have a head start in your career. Now, life in Zangalan is not too expensive. We have seen the number of 25 to 30,000 before on screen, but this already includes, for example, um, all the fees that you have to pay for the government, um, for your health insurance. Um, it also includes your, uh, your rent expenses. So it really adds up to all expenses that you have living here. A shared flat, usually students here live in shared flats, um, which are available from about 600 francs. I have some friends who live here for a bit cheaper, but usually it's around 600 francs more. I personally live in a studio, so I pay a bit more, um, but yeah, that's up for preference. Um, and if you want to find a good flat here in Zagalan, you should definitely check out um, Sharing is Caring on Facebook. Um, I know no one uses Facebook anymore, <laughs> but this platform really offers a lot of um, flats that are up for rent, especially at, towards the end of the semester. Um, and most of my friends actually found their flat on sharing is caring. Then when it comes to food, we have a lot of cafeterias and cafes here at Haske. You will definitely um, find enough coffee here. Um, coffee break is always a big thing um, during lecture hours um, and it's also possible to have a vegan or vegetarian diet here on campus. Um, we have the cafeteria which offers a great variety of daily menus. Um, you can see on the screen it starts from about 6 francs 20 um, but it actually goes up until uh, 15 francs I believe so it's it can be cheap on the one side but it can also get pretty expensive. Um, if this is not an option for you, or if you would like to bring your own food, there's a lot of microwaves on campus as well, which is my preferred option. Next up, um, if you want to enjoy Zangalan, there is a wide range of restaurants and bars, and not too many, but a few clubs at least. Um, and the, the positive thing about not having too many clubs here is that you will see your friends for sure when you go out. We have the um, Dimatio Mittwoch is Fritwoch, which basically means that on Wednesday we go out. Um, it's a bit different from other universities in Switzerland, um, but this really allows us to have, to for example, go to a club event um, on Wednesday evening, then go to a home party from one of our friends, and then go on into the club. That's what a usual party would look like. Also, if you want to enjoy other places different from Zagala, I mean, Zagala is a beautiful city, but every now and again, you might want to go out and see something else. Um, it's only a one hour train or car ride to Zurich, um, two and a half hours to Munich, and about four hours to Milan. I actually was in Milan um, a week ago, so it's really not that far, and it's quite a great opportunity. Um, or in the winter time, which is now obviously coming, you also have around an hour to go skiing, for example, in Davos.
Next up, I would like to inform you about Class Gather Night, which is a strong community with over 33,000 personalities worldwide. This is only the active club members. Of course, we have a lot more alumni from the university, but these 33,000 personalities are actively engaged in the House Guild Alumni Network. This, this network um, ranges from New York to Singapore, and basically every bigger city that we will um, go to work in, you will find a House Guild Alumni branch. Um, and this really allows you to have a network established already in a different city if you go there for work. Another thing that is great about Hasgay, we are not the biggest campus, but we are still pretty big and we have a really strong sense of community. So um, if you finish your studies and start working, you will uh, you might encounter people who have already studied here in Van Halen and you will immediately have a common ground. Exactly. Now we will continue with the exchange semester, which is also an issue for me right now because I'm currently applying to go on exchange. Um, and we have three different, um, you know, let's say, we have three different possibilities to go on exchange. The first and the best opportunity is to go by partner universities. We have about 200 partner universities in the entire world. Um, we have partner universities in every single continent on this planet. Um, so you really have a great community once you want to go, once you make the decision to go on exchange. It is also strongly encouraged by the university, actually. You need to have a minimum grade of 4.5. So um, in the assessment here, you will pass with a 4.0. But if you want to go on exchange with a partner university, you need to have a 4.5. This is manageable if you do your studies well. Um, but yeah. And then also the semester, the exchange semester usually takes place in the fifth or sixth semester. So I've been autumn there in spring. Um, most people actually do go into fifth semester, but for example, if you decide to, to do seven semesters instead of the regular six, um, you could also go in your sixth semester. What is great about the partner universities especially is that you only pay the tuition fees at HSG and can, for example, study in America, um, where the tuition fees are usually a lot higher than here in Switzerland. Um, so basically, if you go by partner universities, you can pay the tuition fees here and then go abroad wherever you would like and just pay the fees here. Here you can see where we have different, all the countries in which we have partner universities. Um, you can see the map is quite green, so we have a lot of uh, universities, as I said already. On every single continent, you will find a partner university. However, if you do not find the university that you want to go to most, um, you can always go by free mover. Free mover is basically you don't need a 4.5 average, you can go by 4.0 if you pass the assessment. Um, but here, um, you have to pay the tuition fees at, from your host university plus a reduced tuition fee at class fee. So this can be quite expensive, especially if you, for example, want to go to America, um, you have to pay the American uh, university fees plus a reduced tuition fee at class fee. Um, you will also have to organize the free mover exchange by yourself. Um, and this can be quite complicated with regards to um, getting the credits that you take accredited here, but usually we will find a way. So don't worry about that too much. There's also the possibility to do Swiss mobility, um, which is basically an exchange inside of Switzerland. You will here also pay the tuition fees at Hasge and you don't need a 4.5 average. Exactly. <clears throat> now we will continue with the campus tour film. Um, if I may encourage you, if you have the possibility to come here at Hasge and have a look on campus, have a feeling of the campus yourself, Definitely do that because the campus tour from was great, but it's nothing compared to actually being here and feeling the, um, the environment, for example, especially from the new building square. Welcome to the campus of the University of St. Gallen. My name is Andreas Oberholzer and I'm a student of the Master Program Business Innovation. And today I'm going to give you a campus tour. We have various teaching formats, lectures, flipped classroom, exercises, seminars, 
And some of the smaller classes, they take place in a room like this one. But what I actually want to show you about this room is the nice view. Because whenever I feel stressed, I just have a look outside and I can instantly relax. Here we are in the Audimax. It's our biggest lecture room. And when lectures are full, we are over 600 students in here. After lectures during the day, we can often benefit from events in the evening, such as podium discussions with leading industry experts. You can come to the library to borrow books and articles for your research, but more than that, it offers you a quiet place for studying and, if you urgently need one, a charging cable for your device. I always say that this is our social area. Why social area? We have the library, we have food, we have the Audimax up there. And that way everyone meets here and there's always a friend to chat to when you're here. The Students' Union not only represents the interests of the students towards the university, but also shapes a landscape of over 120 student initiatives. The clubs range from dance classes to startup programs and sustainability forums. The Career Service Centre is my partner in all my questions on what to do after my studies. I can ask for an individual career counselling, participate in one of their workshops or get to know my future employer at their career fair. We're now in the co-working space. It's a casual place for studying and work. We have a nice coffee bar where we can come for a short break. We can move around all the furniture as we need. And last but not least, we are not forced to be completely quiet in here. This is our canteen where we eat lunch. But now, let's go on to the campus bar. Here we gather for a coffee or beer after lecture. It's always a great place to meet new people and it's completely student run. We have access to the Unisports program and what you do here totally depends on you. We have group fitness courses such as tennis, boot camp or yoga and if you prefer to work out on your own we even have a fully equipped gym. At the University of St. Khan, entrepreneurship is taught and put into practice. In many courses, we are asked to develop our own projects and to pitch in front of real clients. And because the best ideas usually don't come in a regular classroom, we have the makerspace. Here, we can work on our own business models and create prototypes. As most of my friends, I moved to St. Khan for my studies. We all live in shared flats in the city center of St. Khan and enjoy student life in this beautiful part of Switzerland. And by the way, the city center is just 10 minutes by foot from the campus. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you very soon on the campus of the University of St. Gallen. Exactly. So as you can see, the university campus is really beautiful and we have a new building square. Um, so you should definitely come and check it out. Um, now we'll continue with a few questions that we get asked quite often. Um, but if your question doesn't get asked right now, you can always come back at 11.30 where Colleen and I, and I will um, answer even more questions. And we also have Lara, who is a German who did, who did the admissions test. Um, therefore, she knows a lot more about this and about admission questions in general. Exactly. So the first question is, if I pass the university entrance exam, can I defer my secure place to the next year? So no, you can't, because your place is only secured for the respective year of application. Sabrina, do Husky students party a lot? Well, it depends, but I would say in general, definitely yes. Yeah. Um, as we heard earlier uh, before this quick talk, so most people go out every single Wednesday. You're not, can I pass the assessment here even if I'm bad in math? So, yes, you can because I am personally not that good in math and I feel like the requirements for the mathematics course is uh, pretty um, reasonable. So, definitely, yes. 
Yeah, and also you don't need to pass every single course with a 4.0 average. That's true. So you can, um, for example, have not so good grades in math, but even better um, grades in BA, for example. Yes, and also the mathematics course has less within than, for example, the main courses such as law, economics, and business administration. Exactly. Um, are there any preliminary courses in the subject, such as, for example, mathematics? No, there are none, but they are also not required as we learn everything that we need to know during the lectures, during the exercises that we have. Um, it's really not necessary to know anything preliminary. Can I work alongside my studies? So yes, you can, because a lot of students actually work during the studies, but we generally recommend that for the first year you really focus on your studies because the, the workload is kind of intensive in the first year. Exactly. Also, from the second year onwards, you can decide how many credits you want to take. And therefore, you can, for example, either have more credits or less credits, depending on how much your workload is um, outside of uni. Exactly. So is there any difference between the English and the German track of the assessment here? There is. So as we heard beforehand, um, the English track is actually only for the economics track, and the German track is also for the economics track or for the law track. Um, so therefore you have, in the English track, you have, in the second, anyway, <laughs> basically you can have the economics track in English or in German, and if you have it in English, you will have in the second half of the semester international law, whereas you have in the German track in the second half of the semester, um, I think it's Bundesstaatsrecht, which translates to governmental law, I guess, yeah, for Switzerland specifically, so not international aid. Exactly. So other than that, there are not really any differences. So the, no, it's the same pretty much. Exactly. How proficient do I need to be in English? So you do know you don't need to provide um, a proof of an, a language examination. However, we assume that you have a level C1 of English so that you understand the courses and you can converse. Exactly. But also write the papers. So it's yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so you need a lot of prior knowledge in economics and business administration? Absolutely not. Personally, I did the Latin track in high school, so I have no preliminary knowledge whatsoever, but I still passed on that first attempt. So it really is not necessary if you do your part. Yeah, I mean, I had uh, lower economics in high school, and I feel like it didn't really help me that much. So I wouldn't say that it's really useful. What is the standard time for completing a program at HSV? So our <laughs> bachelor's program take um, usually at least six semesters, but you can also do it in add like add it and do it in seven semesters, for example, if you want to have, for example, an internship and you need more time, that is totally possible. And actually a lot of students do this. Exactly. Can I do my bachelor's in Basel and my master's at HSV? Um yeah, sure. <laughs> Why not? Um, if your bachelor's degree is recognized by Hasley, you of course can do the master's here as well. Um, but depending on your bachelor's that you took, uh, you might have to take additional courses. Okay. I hold a Swiss Matura. Do I still have to sit an entrance exam? So no, if you have a Swiss Matura, you don't need to pass the admission test. You just have to pass the assessment here and that's it. So it's cool. Exactly. And if you have the more questions regarding the admission test, you can always come back later, as Laura did the admission test. You can talk more about that. We're both Swiss, so we didn't have to do it. <laughs> um, if I go in exchange for a semester abroad, will I have to repeat the semester when I return to last game? So, no, if you plan well your courses, you, you will not need to have an additional semester. But if you wish to do an additional semester, you can also of course. Exactly. I mean, it's of course a lot less stress if you do seven semesters instead of six, but it's definitely possible to do everything in six semesters. Yeah, because you can get a lot of courses credited at your exchange university as well. So you just have to be organized in your course program. Exactly. <laughs> um, do I have to commit to a specialization when I apply for admission? Or can I still change my mind later during the assessment year? You can change it later. Actually, you do not have to uh, decide anything except for doing the um, economic part, the, econ the economic assessment, or the law assessment. Um, and of course, the language you want to take the assessment in. But which bachelor you're actually going to study on later on, you will have to decide that, that only in the spring semester of the assessment. So in the second semester, you can decide. 
does the Husky Law Program cover Swiss law only? So yeah, it does. Although in the English track, you can you will have um, courses in international law in the second semester. Here, the main focus is on Swiss law, as we're in Switzerland. Exactly. For example, I'm doing international affairs, and I also have courses in international law. So there are other roads if you're more interested in international law to take them the law track. Do I need to have any prior knowledge for the chosen foreign language? Or can I, for example, learn Chinese from scratch? So you do not need any prior knowledge if you take um if you choose a language that has an A1 level. So A1 level, um A1 level means that you don't need to have any prior knowledge. And you can, for example, pick A1 for Chinese, Russian, or Japanese. So no prior knowledge required here. Exactly. I, for example, did Chinese A1 in my first year, and I'm currently taking A2. And it's definitely very possible to pass this and even have really good grades. Yeah, you had a really good grade. Thanks. <laughs> Um, but you chose English, right? Yeah, I chose English. I was basically distressed about passing the assessment here, right? So I picked the security choice, <laughs> which was English, and everyone, everything went well. But yeah, you can totally pick a language that you do not have any prior knowledge. And yeah, it's also really interesting if you want to learn a new language. Exactly. It's a great opportunity. Mm -hmm. yeah. Will students have lectures in English or only those who choose to study in English? So to complete your bachelor's degree, uh, you will have to earn some credits in um, a language that is different than your language of instruction. So, for example, I did the assessment here in English, so I have to complete 12 credits in German. Mm -hmm. And if you picked, for example, German in the assessment here, then you will have to do 12 credits in English. Exactly. That's only for the bachelor's levels. In the assessment, you have only German if you took the German track or only English if you took the English track. Okay, uh, if I complete the assessment here in German, can I still take courses taught in English in the subsequent two years? So, yes, you can, obviously, because committing to a particular language is only required for the first year, so for the assessment year. And um, in second and in third year of your bachelor's, you can take some courses in German or in English as well. You actually have to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, is the assessment year different for those who want to study law? So, if you want to study law, you will uh, be able to take courses in criminal law instead of mathematics. Mm -hmm. um, but however, if you change your specialization for starting from the second year, I mean, uh, then you will have to complete courses in mathematics. So that's why we recommend to do the so-called classic assessment year, which is the economics one. Exactly. So is it possible to do a business and uh, a bachelor, sorry, in law and economics with um, an economics assessment? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, that's possible. <laughs> nice law and economics. So we recommend the economics track as you have mathematics and you will definitely need the ND economics um, subjects, so macroeconomics, microeconomics. A lot of math is involved in those subjects, I would say. So it's definitely better to have the economics track. Um, but if you want to do a bachelor's in law, then the law assessment is obviously better. Are there any preliminary courses in the subject, such as, for example, mathematics? Uh, no, we do not offer any preliminary courses, um, but we do have, for example, the, um, what's it called? Certain individual, like, private companies that offer, um, like, to, um, summary courses, kind of, for the examinations, yeah. right? Kind of also tutoring, depending on the course that you take. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, for example, yeah. That really is for later. So if you have any more questions about that, write us in your, or uh, if you actually come to university, you can always ask older students because most students actually study with these private companies. Yeah. At the moment, I am 17 years old, but I will turn 18 later in September. Can I enroll at Husky? Definitely. Even yeah. if you're 14, you could enroll at Husky if you have the Matura before that. Yeah. Can I still switch to studying in English after completing the assessment here? You definitely can, um, but as for every other bachelor's track, you have to do certain topics. If you study in German, your bachelor's, then you have to do a certain amount of credits in English and vice versa. Exactly. Okay, when are the exams held? So the exams are usually held in January and in June for each um, winter, I mean for fall and spring um, semesters. Exactly. We do not have annual exams generally, only for your language exams in the first semester, in the first year. So in assessment, you have a language course, and there you only have one exam at the end of the semester. Mm -hmm. At least for Chinese, it was like that. 
English as well. Oh, okay. I think it's generally yeah, the case. Probably. Yeah. Um, and then all other exams are held semesterly, so no annual exams. Where can I find information on requirements for the admissions to a master's program? So you can find all information on the admissions and on the website unionscape.ch. How long does a degree in business administration take? I think we've already answered. So mm -hmm. it was six semesters, but you can, of course, take additional semesters in these things. Um, is the legal content told that possibly also for no? Yeah. <laughs> okay, is the legal content uh, taught at Haskell also applicable in the German legal system? So the general principles and techniques can surely be transferred, but um, the curriculum here um, covers this as well. Um, exactly. Uh, how much does it cost to go on an exchange abroad? If I went um, to the US, for example, will I have to pay my tuition fees um, at the American University as well? Um, it depends. So if you do a partner university, you only have to pay the St. Allen um, tuition fees. But if you go on your own and do a free mover um, exchange semester, you have to organize everything yourself. You have to pay the American tuition fees and also the exchange tuition fees on Fed Husky. So that can be quite expensive, <laughs> yeah. especially in America. So that's a good thing that we have a lot of partner universities here. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. Um, and then finally, what are the most common topics in the admissions? So you can find all um, the topics um, on our website, unionsk.ch, but we'll also discuss this um, later on. At 11.30, we'll have Lara who will be the admission guest. So she will tell you maybe more than we can. So. Exactly. So this is already the end of the main presentation. Um, it will, this whole structure will continue at 10.30 with the individual presentations on the different bachelor's programs. We have two different runs um, for the uh, bachelor's programs. So as you can see on the screen, um, you can decide on which two bachelor's degrees interest you the most, um, and then go into these different presentations. And at 11, starting from 11.30, but you can join us anytime, um, Kalina and I and Lara, who did the admissions <laughs> test, <laughs> uh, we will be here and answer even more questions if any of your questions have not been answered up until now. We wish you a wonderful day, um, a lot of information, and we hope to see you in Start Week next year. Okay. See you.